Welcome to the Lifestyle Overland Story. In the last episode, Caroline and I headed north from Utah in our Lexus GX460 on an epic father-daughter trip to Alaska. This long drive hasn't been without its drama, and after nearly getting trapped in a freak spring snowstorm, we drove 20 hours after a 2.30 a.m. wake-up call to escape the heavy falling trees and arrived at what we had hoped would be the perfect camp alongside Salmon Glacier just outside of Hyder, Alaska. But unfortunately, Snowdrifts still blocked the last of the trail, so we had to bail off into the British Columbia bush where we lucked upon a secluded camp with views of the snow-covered mountaintops. With four days and 2,000 miles behind us, this is where we pick up our story. Too tired. You're too tired. Good morning. Finally, an excellent sleep last night. No uh, crashing trees around us, so we're caught up on sleep. Matter of fact, we, we slept in just a little bit, so it's good for the rest, not great for the schedule. We still have about 25 hours of drive time left to make it to Anchorage, and we're already four days into this trip, so. It's a long haul. Now we get a lot of questions about security. So one little hack that we do is, because we have Starlink, you can use these little guys right here. These are ring drop cams. So they're battery powered and they tie into the Wi-Fi from Starlink there. And I can actually check camp's perimeter from the tent. I just open up the app, go from camera to camera, see what's going on. And worst case scenario, if something really bad did go down, it's not stored locally. It's connected. It's in the cloud. So those guys are going down. Anyhow, it's handy. It's pretty simple too. But wait, there's more. If you ever go into a restaurant in a big city after a trip or during your trip and you're all worried about your gear because, let's face it, this is a billboard, you can set this up inside your vehicle or inside your trailer and you can watch the cab from the restaurant so if somebody does bust in you've got evidence but most importantly you got eyes on your prize Set 
fire to my trails I'm all burned up when daylight comes But you know where to find me You're the only one I believe in Scars as deep as deep can go Are heavy on my soul And you see all I am But still you are letting go Don't let me go Don't let me go As the miles ticked off along the beautiful Stuart Cassier Highway, so did the bear sightings as we left BC behind and crossed over into the Yukon Territory. But even more exciting than all the wildlife and mountain views was a chance encounter with a fan of our channel at a fuel stop, which really brightened our weary spirits as a good reminder of the impact our stories can have. Well, that was cool. I always love running into folks who watch our channel really encouraging stuff too he, he said that he had some health stuff that had him laid up for quite some time a couple years ago and started watching the channel and now he's up here doing this and whew, that's the kind of stuff that keeps us excited right. i need to go to the bathroom okay. <laughs> <laughs> i don't uh, have time to chit chat so for those of you who have never been to this part of the country you'll find these gas stations with these little what they call a card lock so you'll go to this little station here put in your credit card tell it which pump you want make sure you get the right pump pump your fuel and rock on yeah just something to be aware of oh and by the way restrooms or roll the dice they're pretty eclectic whether or not you'll find them and once you do find them what the situation may or may not be so um, yeah just be prepared After putting another 500 miles behind us, it was time to start to search for camp. Now the nice part about northern travel this time of year is that you end up with plenty of daylight hours the further north you travel, especially as you get close to the summer solstice. And so our late start this morning still didn't leave us in the dark even after 12 hours of travel. All right, usually, you know me, I'd go camp someplace away from the crowds. I left this one up to Caroline and she likes the lake, so. We're gonna go post up down here amongst the, uh, the crowds. Now I know I said we were keeping our meals simple so we could move fast, but I did happen to grab one or two substantial options for a special meal here and there. So tonight, I thought it was time to crack into the steaks, mushrooms, and salad, which was quite the improvement over our sugar and carbohydrate splurge. the best sticker of cheese No, surely not. I'm dead serious. Screw this salad. <laughs> Delicious dinner in our bellies. It's about almost 10 o'clock now. Still very, very bright. Sunset's not until about 11.15. I'm glad our tent is pretty dang dark. So ended up grabbing this little recreation area here on a spectacular lake. Absolutely gorgeous, but it's a popular spot. We're in here a little tight, but it seems like everybody's pretty chill, pretty quiet. 
I think we'll be okay. All right, grab some sleep. And then I think we have something like 14 and a half more hours drive time tomorrow. We'll see if we make all that. We'll see you in the morning. next morning, we emerged to find the camping area mostly cleared out. So we took our time making some coffee and enjoying our cereal while taking in a few peaceful moments overlooking the pristine lake. While checking in on social media, I learned that some fellow YouTubers were only about an hour ahead of us on their way to the Dempster Highway. So Caroline and I hit the road to intercept them in Whitehorse for lunch. <laughs> Your face is like smiling, but you're also like, are you dead serious? Thank you. You're all there. See you guys. been a while. <laughs> yeah, look at you. There they are. Look at those guys. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? It's been a while. This is Caroline. This is Brad and Sean. How are you, man? All right. Well, thank you, Brad and Sean, for waiting up for us and sharing a delicious lunch with us there. White horse. Very, very tempting to turn north instead of west. Well, I hope you guys have a fun trip up to Tuck. Now, back on the highway, headed towards Anchorage. We're almost there. A couple more days. Whew! What a haul. Like I mentioned before, one of the fun parts of this long drive is getting to try unique candy along the way that we don't have back in the lower 48. So let me be clear. The sugar intake is a special splurge for us and not the normal fare. So, moms, put the keyboard down and step away from the comments. Now, on to the taste tests. So whenever we're in a different country, we like to try different candies. We found some new ones, so we've got some Macintosh and some Heat Moors. The experimentation continues. What else are you going to do to break up the monotony? Buttery, chewy. 
favorite way to extract feelings. I'm trying to Macintosh this and look how good that looks. That is... I don't know. It's literally impossible. The daddy of all sugar daddies. <laughs> it's not even cracking. Whoa. Mm, that is good though. I'm scared to eat this. What would you rate this? Please don't chip a tooth. Do you see how hard that is? That's unedible. Now I'm gonna lose a tooth. Loser. Frosties, hold on. Woo! So in the winter time, when it gets super cold, you'll get frozen ground underneath the highway and it'll buckle the pavement and it'll make this big, huge speed bump. And you'll be driving along for miles and miles, just enjoying the scenery, checking out the wildlife, and then woof, out of nowhere, Frosty will get you. If you're familiar with the channel, then you might be wondering why all the frequent fuel stops since we're supposed to have a long range tank on board Aspen. Well, the sad news is, is that the long range automotive tanks are indeed great for extending range, but it comes with a list of quirks and issues to work around. So I had to remove the auxiliary tank to make it simple for future renters. The good news is, is that while Alaska is remote, it has fuel stops spread perfectly along its very few roads. So as long as you plan your stops well, it's very unlikely you'll need any auxiliary fuel. hours later next camp oh, five more hours until Anchorage good night all right well good morning folks not such a great sleep last night a little bit of a stomach issue kept me up for a little bit but the good news is we're only a few hours away from Anchorage and from a house with a shower and a real bed hit the reset button and then I mean, the real adventure has begun, but the real, real part of the adventure kicks off. And we get prepped to head to Kodiak Island. So, let's get on the road. At last, we were on our final leg to Anchorage, but the wildlife encounters were about to drop a big surprise on us. Not just a porcupine, but a mother porcupine with a baby. I'm not sure how prickly the little ones actually are, but this one looked cute enough to almost risk a cuddle.
3,227 miles later, we're in Anchorage. That was hard. That was a haul. Finally, after seven days and 3,392 miles, which included the side quest and tire size corrections from the odometer, we arrived at Craig and Brooks' home, where Caroline was about to be reunited with her best friend, Claire. I see my best friend. Claire, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Needless to say, they were a little excited for the reunion after a couple years apart. I might have been a little excited myself to be reunited with one of the coolest Labradors on Earth, and Milo was clearly missing my scratches too. My friend Craig arrived a few hours later after an emergency room visit due to attempting to remove his wedding ring with a roof rack by jumping off the truck during the trip preparations. As you can imagine, it didn't go well for his unsuspecting finger, but I appreciated his excitement about my arrival. Now it was time for showers, laundry, and a resupply before our trip to Kodiak Island where the real fun begins. <laughs> hey, Mom! You look the most gangly animal. Good morning, folks. We are in Anchorage. Rested up, washed up. Aspen even got a bath last night thanks to Corbin. And then we've got the tundra named Kodiak here. That Craig and his daughter Claire are going to be riding in. So we've got a couple of little errands to run here in Anchorage before we actually head down towards Homer to jump on the ferry. So ride along, let me show you a couple of our favorite spots. With everything repacked and ready, we headed into town for a couple of essential stops for anyone traveling through Anchorage. The first of which is the Alaska Mint. So you remember this spot? I do. Yeah. I got my little wolf coin, right? That's right. Since our first visit here in 2018, we've had to return every time we're in Alaska to see what kind of crazy gold nuggets or fossils they've put in the store. They also have their own mint, hence the name. So they also have some beautiful coins with Alaskan themes struck right here in their shop. But honestly, my favorite attractions are the gold nuggets that come in from local miners because it seems like every one of them has their own story of the find, which truthfully doesn't help my gold fever at all. Days ago, like three. Yeah. Are you on the guy who found it? No, we are from Las Vegas. Broke his foot right before his trip up to come mine with his buddies. And he's like, I still gotta go. You know, still gotta go. So he's all of his buddies are down mining where they're supposed to mine in the river. He's where he could make it with his broken foot, and he uh, found this biggest nugget of the trip. Oh my gosh! Yeah, just a beauty. Look at that. Got some quartz in there too. Yep. You can hold it. That's what does that heavier. one go for? That one's like 20 grand. 20 grand. So uh, we asked him and he said he'll be breaking his foot in preparation for next week's trip. <laughs> <laughs> Not really safe. The biggest in the house right now. Yeah. 35 grand. Oh, yeah. This is the biggest the miner ever found. So that one's from like the 50s. Man, look how smooth that one is. Yeah, and that's just the river. Yeah. Just smoothing it out. Yeah. But uh, he sold us that one and this one. And uh, he oh, moved. Another smooth one, yeah. And then he moved to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> He's done with the Alaskan winters. Oh man, that is so cool. When he found it, I think we looked it up and gold was like $100 an ounce. And now it was 2400 when we paid him. <laughs> he did so <laughs> he good. He sat on that. Yeah. <laughs> He did so good. He rode the inflation rate. <laughs> so each one of these kind of has a pedigree, right? Totally, yep. So they all come with, and even the big ones, they just don't fit in the book. Right. But they all come with a map of where they were found. Yeah. That's pretty close. Yeah, where is that? Sunrise. Thing. Sunrise. Real wow. close. Last so this is, this is actually petrified then, right? Yeah, that one, we're guessing about 5,000 years old. Man, look at those teeth. And it died... Uh, way off the coast uh -huh. instead of at the coast which is why it's intact because usually the wave action uh, destroys it so this was like somebody dove and found a couple it? gold miners were doing that dredging off the bottom of the ocean and they found it in four feet of mud wow yeah so it was super deep that is wild yeah 
I guess Wait, you follow the Boneyard guy. Yeah, yeah. We work with his daughters for their oh, do you? daughters. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're good friends with them. We, uh, awesome. We're making them a coin. Yeah. If massive gold nuggets aren't enough to get your blood pumping, then these impressive fossils will at least make your jaw drop. Crazy enough, most of these are a byproduct of gold mining efforts, and some fetch far more than any old nugget would. A full-length adult tusk from a woolly mammoth can fetch over $70,000 if you find the right buyer, whereas a complete skull will put you back the price of a Ferrari. The good news is, there's plenty of attainable sized nuggets to take home as an Alaskan souvenir that will forever hold its value as more than just a keepsake. You can see more of their impressive collection at alaskamint.com or stop in and tell them Lifestyle Overland sent you. With their stomach growling, it was time for one last stop before hitting the trail. This time, we're returning to the infamous and world-renowned Moose's Tooth Pizzeria. Not only is it some of the best pizza on the planet, but it holds a very special place in our hearts as being one of the first ever Lifestyle Overland Patreon meetup locations way back in 2018 with folks who still support the channel to this day. Thank you for riding along for so long, guys. Copy the copy. Copy that. Making copy. <laughs> <laughs> With our appetites quenched, it was time to head for the Kenai Peninsula as we made our way to Homer in a very unique mode of transportation to Kodiak Island. Well, that's all we have time for today, so thanks for riding along on this part of the story and join us next time as our adventure continues. But until then, remember to stay curious and leave it better than you found it. Oh, and before you go, if you're wanting to explore Alaska without this long drive, then head to explore.rent and reserve Aspen for your very own fly-in and drive-off adventure. Or take a look at even more options at alaskaoverlander.com, but be sure to use the code LIFESTYLE for a $100 discount before you lock in that rig.